Hi again. Uh, we're going to look at a data response question, an Edexcel June 2013 data question on Brazil. So here's the data. Figure one shows GDP per capita in dollars for Brazil, rising most years apart from 2009, heading upwards though. Figure two shows the population of Brazil. Again, significant increase in population, 176 million rising to 203 million over the period. Figure three, which will come into play later in the question, is a, is a chart showing annual FDI inflows into Brazil in billions of dollars. Trend increase over the years, particularly from 2003 onwards, but notice the volatility of the data flows. There's also an extract, which we'll come to in a, in a few minutes after we've been through the first couple of questions. So question A, uh, with reference to figures one and two, what might be inferred about the change in GDP for Brazil between 2002 and 2011? five marks. Always worth defining the term, the key term in the question. G GDP is, of course, the monetary value of the output of goods and services produced within within Brazil. Uh, when you get uh, a question with reference to figures one and two, it's, you must put the data in your answer. So don't write that in words. Put the data in. Don't forget, this is data response, not data ignore or data leave out. So per capita income is rising in, in Brazil, approximately 7,800 to 11,700. Uh, population growing approximately again 176 million to, to 203. If you've got slightly different answers from them from reading off the charts, don't worry, the exam boards have a, a tolerance there. And GDP, of course, is GDP per capita multiplied by population. So you do a quick data calculation. GDP has risen from approximately $1.8 trillion in 2002 to approximately $2.7 trillion in 2011. And to nail the mark, just do a quick percentage change, about 50, 53%. So we're using the data, we're defining our terms, uh, we get our marks. Extract, the data response question also has quite a lengthy extract on Brazil. Um, and if you go to the uh, exam board, you can download the PDF, of course, for this one and read it through thoroughly. Basically, the story here was Brazil was growing pretty quickly, uh, overtaking some countries, uh, dash for growth. Um, but some, some negatives along the way, exchange rate rising, um, attempts by Luis da Silva and Dilma Rousseff has subsequently, subsequently been impeached, of course, to reduce corruption, uh, Gini coefficient falling in Brazil, um, and then some stuff on corruption, on natural, natural resources, uh, Brazil, one of the most attractive places in the world for investment, mentions high interest rates, and it also mentions the real has increased by 40%. Uh, exporters, it will be a huge headache if the commodity boom ends. Um, thinking about the negative effects of the high the high currency, there we are. Okay, Brazil must continue to attract FDI, particularly as the government covers the cost, plans to cover the cost of oil extraction and nuclear power and other infrastructure over the next few years. So there's an extract there on Brazil. <clears throat> Question B. With reference to extract one, analyse two reasons why the value of the real has gone up. So for an eight marker, 8KA marks to go for. You're looking for two reasons analysed. You need some analysis in there. Define an appreciation of the exchange rate, a rise in the external value of a currency. Of course, Brazil has a floating, a managed floating currency system. So mention that. That's, you know, defining the term that way gives the confidence to the examiner that you really know what you're talking about. The appreciation, of course, is in the floating system. A revaluation will be inside a fixed exchange rate system. And then build your analysis, looking for two key causes. Uh, mentioned in the extract, well, it mentions high interest rates. So you can build a bit of analysis showing how high interest rates causes in, an inflow of hot money into Brazil, causing the exchange rate to appreciate an outward shift of demand. Extract one also mentions the increase in the value of exports of soft commodities. Brazil, of course, is a big natural resource exporter. Um, so you can talk about the link between rising Export revenues, current account surplus, and a rise in the exchange rate. So two key causes there, and it's always good to put an analysis diagram in, in particular showing how an outward shift of demand for the Brazilian real uh, has increased the value of the real by about 40%. You only need two points, of course, for an eight marker, two analysis points. You could also bring in the effects of quantitative easing in the United States, causing an outflow of dollars from America, which flew into many countries, including Brazil where yields were higher. But for an eight marker, just two points analysed. Question C, examine the likely effects of the appreciation of the real on the balance of payments accounts, 10 marks. 
6k a four evaluation marks here always good again define an appreciation define the balance of payments uh, and crucially of course at a2 you need to make a distinction between the current account and the financial or the capital account and then build your analysis analyze the possible impact of the real on the current account well imports become cheaper if the real goes up therefore that reduces the cost of importing technologies and things like commodities and raw materials so that should help uh, perhaps improve the balance of payments because of an increase in aggregate supply of course that depends on the elasticity of demand for imports exports of course may suffer if the, if the real goes up and that increases the foreign price of brazilian exports so it might cause a fall in export demand perhaps a worsening of the current account however a bit of evaluation that depends on the price elasticity of demand for brazilian products I'm making a bit of analysis there and evaluation that, that the elasticity for essential exports like iron ore could be fairly low, whereas Brazilian car makers facing stiff competition from the United States, from Mexico, from other countries could have a more price elastic demand, in which case the real could really seriously damage Brazilian car makers. A um, bit of evaluation in the current account and the short run, of course, the current account could actually improve if the currency appreciates. If you've been revising the J curve, you could uh, draw a diagram of showing reverse J-curve effect, where an appreciation initially causes the current account to, to get better before it worsens if the Marshall Learner effect takes hold. Best answers. Also mention the capital account. The question does say Brazilian balance of payments accounts. So yes, the real will affect the current account, exports and imports, for example, in particular, primary and secondary income. But uh, the real going up is also going to be affecting the capital account. For example, the inflows of hot money, um, a stronger AR might actually dissuade some people from investing in Brazil because the cost of land will go up in, in other currencies terms. Some FDI might, for example, shift away from Brazil towards lower cost countries such as Mexico. Um, and more evaluation, you can question the length of the, the currency appreciation, the scale and the length, the extent to which the real is, is actually overvalued, etc. Question D. Uh, assess the potential problems associated with primary product dependency for a country such as Brazil. Now, when it says a country such as, you don't necessarily have to write about Brazil. The best answers clearly will. But you may have studied another country in primary product dependency. So you can talk about that and get some credit as well in the exam. Again, key to define the terms. What is what is meant by primary product dependency? Heavy, heavy dependence of primary sector in terms of exports and jobs and tax revenues, what have you. Primary commodities include commercial farming, growing industries and also extractive industries such as mining, oil and gas. But it says assess the potential problems. So I would go with the flow of the question. Start with the potential problems. Analyze them first and then evaluate. And it, oops, so here are some of the, let's go back here. So here are some of the uh, potential problems. Here we go. So things like the risk of corruption associated with extractive industries. Uh, you may have covered that. Resource rents not flowing to the poorest communities. The rising inequality. Extract 1 talks about the Gini coefficient in Brazil being 0.51. Um, macro volatility, of course. Um, countries are heavily primary product dependent, tend to be more vulnerable to external shocks and volatile terms of trade. You could take a long-term view, talk about the Prebish Singer hypothesis, which of course suggests the fall in the real price of many primary commodities over time, um, although that's been questioned in recent years. And you could also mention the risk of the Dutch disease, where a country which is exporting vast amounts of valuable primary commodities can see their exchange rate appreciate, and that can cause deindustrialization in their emerging manufacturing sectors. So the key here is to identify and analyse some problems, but mention the extracts when you get an opportunity. Evaluation points. Uh, well, of course, it's possible for countries to avoid primary sector, uh, primary product dependency. Many countries have set up sovereign wealth funds, stabilisation funds, including, for example, Ghana and Angola. Uh, they're building up funds in order to invest in other sectors to diversify their economy. Uh, manufacturing, light manufacturing, investment in infrastructure, investment and tourism, for example. Uh, floating exchange rate, of course, if primary commodities fall in price, then the exchange rate tends to depreciate and that can help to absorb some of the shock. Um, and crucially, of course, massively important countries that are primary product dependent 
they need to make sure that wealth from under the, under the ground turns into real economic growth above the above the ground. So uh, corruption reforms and uh, trying to make uh, countries more transparent could be important. Again, you could go back to the extract there. But you just need to make uh, two two key evaluation points really there for that question. And then finally, the 15 marker is a really, really good question, actually, one that you should nail. Evaluate the benefits of inward FDI for a country, again, such as Brazil. 15 marks, 9 KA, 6 eval. You can talk about other countries. You don't necessarily have to talk about Brazil, but it, it makes sense really to think about Brazil if you've studied the country and use the extracts well. So define inward investment. It could be it could be land grabs. It could be investment in manufacturing capacity. It could be uh, mergers and takeovers, joint ventures. I think the the best answer is reference figure three. Okay, figure three is really useful. And so far we haven't really used figure three. It's there for a reason. There's been a significant increase in FDI into Brazil, fifty billion dollars or more in two thousand and eleven. Go back to question A. We calculated GDP was two point three seven trillion. So therefore, inward investment in Brazil was only 2% of GDP, which is not particularly high by uh, sort of relative terms. So 50 billion sounds like a lot, but it's only just 2% of Brazilian GDP. But uh, crucially, the, the chart also shows the volatility of, of investment. Now, then builds your analysis. We're looking to build some points, many, many points, so you don't necessarily have to use all of them. But the impact of FDR on, on, on infrastructure, uh, a2 macro people from Medixel would probably want to use the solo diagram to show a rise in the capital stock, an increase of capital per worker, possible benefits of FDI in terms of better training for local workers, improving productivity from better human capital, inward investment to grow a country's export capacity, um, more competition in domestic markets, inward investment in jobs, creating incomes and helping to overcome the savings gap. So lots of potential benefits. Uh, a good analysis diagram to use would be ADAS, showing how investment is triple powered in the sense it creates extra demand, but it also affects aggregate supply both in the short and the long term. And then crucially, of course, you get stuck into your evaluation. Again, you can make three separate points briefly or develop two well. But again, crucially, refer to figure three and refer to extract one at least once. So the volatility of FDI is shown by the data. You would you would definitely include that in your answer. And then you can include some of these other points. To what extent are profits from FDI flowing to elites, powerful elites, rather than the bottom 40%? Um, you know, the problem of land grabs, people buying up land cheaply in Brazil with little or no benefit to the local community. Indeed, it may, it may uh, threaten their um, historic land um, ownership. Ethical standards from transnational corporations. Uh, volatility we've mentioned, to what extent does foreign investment create lots of new jobs? Is it labour intensive um, and employing domestic workers? Or is it capital intensive by and large employing overseas workers? And you could bring in the idea of monopsony power as well. So crucially here, you've got a great opportunity in this 15 market to analyse and evaluate the benefits of FDI. Okay, that's how I'd, uh, that's how I'd answer this particular question on Brazil.